Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to recreate a custom star and medallion that looks like the ones on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. For this example, I created one for Dick Weber, who was one of the most famous professional bowlers of the 1960s. We'll start with a document that's 23 by 13 inches with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. We'll use this Michael Jackson star as a template. You can download this picture by using the link I included in the description of this video. Hide the template and make the background active. Go to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. Make the amount 400% Gaussian and monochromatic. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. We'll blur it by one pixel. Press Ctrl or Command plus L to call up the Levels window and change the input shadows to 196 and the input highlights to 198. Change the output dark value to 13 and the output light values to 180. Click on the eyeball of the template to make it visible and click on the new layer icon to make a new layer. Click on the horizontal single row marquee tool and click on the top tile line of the template. Hold Shift and click on the bottom line. Call up your vertical single column marquee tool and go to the left tile line, press Shift and click down. Now go to the right tile line, press Shift and click down as well. Go to Edit and Stroke. We'll stroke it by two pixels. We'll center it and click on the color box to pick a color. I'm choosing a 70% gray. Click OK and then click OK again. Then delete the selection. In the Layers panel, click on the FX icon and choose Bevel and Emboss. We'll use Inner Bevel and Chisel Hard. Check Contour and click OK. Click off the eyeball of the template to hide it and go to the Tile Line layer and press Ctrl or Command as you click on it. This will call up its selection. Then click on the Layer Mask icon which will make a layer mask of the selection. Click on the layer to make it active. We're going to brush in some highlights in the tile lines to give them a metallic reflective quality. Press D to make your foreground and background colors black and white respectively and press X to invert them. Now with white as our foreground color, press B to call up your brush tool and we'll change the opacity to 100% and the blend mode to normal. Now brush over some areas of the tile lines to brighten them. Click on the new layer icon and make the template visible. Call up your pen tool and click on one of the points of the star. Press shift and click on the opposite point. Pressing shift holds the work path to horizontal, vertical or 45 degree angles. Continue clicking on points of the star to create a work path of this shape. To close the path click on the starting point. Right click on the work path and choose make selection. Keep the feather radius at zero pixels. Press Q to make the selection into a quick mask. Make sure white is your foreground color and press G to call up your paint bucket. Click inside the center of the star two or three times to ensure all of the quick mask within that area is deleted. Now press Q to make the quick mask of the entire star shape back into a selection. We'll rename this layer Star. Click on the Layer Mask icon and that'll make a layer mask next to the empty layer. Hide the template and click on the empty layer to make it active. I want to fill the layer with black and since black is our background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Go to Filter, Noise and Add Noise. The amount is 400% Gaussian and monochromatic. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. We'll blur it by one pixel. Click on the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Brightness and Contrast. Slide the Brightness and Contrast all the way to the left. We'll add another Adjustment Layer and choose Levels. Make the dark output levels 57 and the light output levels 202. Make one more adjustment layer and choose solid color. 
Choose whatever color you'd like your star to be, but for this example, I'm using 7B3951. Press and hold Alt or Option as you hover your cursor between the adjustment layer and the layer beneath it. When you see this overlapping circle symbol, click down. This creates a clipping mask, which instructs the adjustment layer to only affect the one layer beneath it. We'll change the blending mode of the color adjustment layer from Normal to Color. We'll hide the tie lines and the background and click on the new layer icon. In this layer, I want to place a composite snapshot of the star. To do this, press Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Let's do some organizing. Let's take all the layers we use to make the composite snapshot of the star and move them into its own folder. To do this, click on the top adjustment layer, go to the bottom star layer, press Shift as we click on it. This highlights all the layers between the top and bottom layers we clicked. Now drag them into the folder icon. We'll rename this folder Star. Make the tile lines in the background visible. Make the composite star active. Click on the FX icon and choose Stroke. Click on the color box and I'm choosing FFE4B7. We'll position the stroke inside and make it 4 pixels in size. We'll hide the star folder, drag the template up to the top, and make it visible. We're ready to create the medallion inside the star. Click on the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Press Z to call up your magnifier tool and magnify up the medallion. Call up your elliptical marquee tool, go to the center, press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and drag out a circle. Now you can hide the template and go to Edit and Stroke. It'll be an inside stroke of 6 pixels. Click on the color box and the color is DDD7AA. Click OK and then click OK to close the stroke. Press Ctrl or Command D to delete the selection. We'll rename the layer Ring. Click on the FX icon and choose Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel and the technique Chisel Hard. The highlight mode is Color Dodge and the shadow mode is Linear Burn. Slide both opacities to 100%. Check Texture and click on the little arrow next to the pattern. Click on the inside arrow and choose Large List. This list displays the largest thumbnails of patterns with their respective names. Click on the inside arrow again and I'm choosing Grayscale Paper. Click OK. This replaced the existing presets of patterns with the new pattern preset. I'll scroll down the list and choose Linen. I'll make the scale 9% and slide the depth all the way to the right. Go to the ring layer and press Ctrl or Command as you click on it to call up its selection. Click on the new layer icon and we'll rename this layer Circle. Press Q to make the selection into a quick mask and call up your paint bucket tool. Make sure white is your foreground color. Click anywhere outside the ring to delete the quick mask, leaving the inside circle intact. Press Q to make the quick mask into a selection and Control shift i or Command shift i to invert the selection. Click on the foreground color and I'm using D7C28E. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the selection with that color. Then delete the selection. Double click on the circle layer to call up the layer style window. Click on inner shadow and change the blend mode to linear burn. Make the distance 1 pixel, the size 1 pixel and the choke 76%. Click inner glow and change the blend mode to multiply. Make the opacity 83% and the noise 8%. Click on the color box. I'm choosing 574E4A. Make the choke 5% and the size 16 pixels. Click Bevel and Emboss. Make the depth 1%, the size 0, and the soften 0. Check Texture. As before, check Linen. The scale is 9% and slide the depth to the right. 
Now that we have the base of the medallion, we're ready to place in its center a simple design element that represents the industry of the person. Using clip art for your symbol is easy and effective. Just type in free clip art in your web browser to find them. To get your symbol into your Walk of Fame file, press Ctrl or Command plus A to select it and Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it. Click on the tab of the Walk of Fame file to open it and then press Ctrl or Command plus V to paste your symbol into it. Call up your Magic Wand tool and click anywhere inside your symbol. Go to Select and choose Similar. This will make a selection of everything that's black. Make a new layer and we'll name it Pins. Since we now have a selection of the symbol, we can trash the original clip art by dragging it into the trash can. Click on the foreground color and I'm using DCD39A. Then fill the selection with the color and delete the selection. We need to fit our symbol inside the medallion. To do this, we'll call up the Transform tool. Go to a corner and drag in to reduce the size. To reposition it, click inside the Transform and move it. Press Enter or Return to accept it. We're going to make a layer mask of the circle. Place your cursor over the layer and press Ctrl or Command as you click on it. This makes a selection of the circle. Then click on the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Double click on the layer to call up the layer style window. Click on drop shadow and we'll make the distance 2 pixels. Click on outer glow, we'll make the noise 12% and click on the color box. I'm choosing 574E4A. Make the spread 15% and the size 10 pixels. Make the blend mode normal. Click inner glow Make the blend mode normal. Make the opacity 100% and the noise 87%. Click on the color box. I'm choosing CDC68F. Make the choke 51% and the size 7 pixels. Click bevel and emboss and choose chisel hard. Click texture, linen and choose the same scale and depth as before. Click back on Bevel and Emboss and let's change the Highlight Mode to Color Dodge. Go to Shadow Mode and we'll change that to Linear Burn. Slide the Highlight Opacity to 100% and click OK. We're ready to set our text. Scroll down and click on the eyeball of the template to make it visible. Call up your Type Tool and click on the Character Text box. I'm choosing a font called Arial Narrow which you can download for free at ufonts.com. Click on a color box and click on a letter on the template to pick up its color. Then click OK. Type out your text and call up your Move tool to reposition it. Scroll down and hide the template. Scroll back up and close the text windows. Click the FX icon and choose Drop Shadow. The blend mode is Multiply and the opacity is 40%. Click on Bevel and Emboss and choose Chisel Hard. Make the size 0 pixels, click Texture and repeat the same choices as before. Let's group all the medallion layers into one folder, repeating the same process as we did for the star layers. We'll rename this folder Medallion. We'll give ourselves even more room by going to the text layer and clicking on the little arrow. This will compress the effects. To see your entire document on your screen, press Ctrl or Command-0. Click on the top layer and make a composite snapshot of our screen. Let's make our image lean back. Make a new file by going to File and New. Make this document 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. We'll click back on the tab of our Walk of Fame file to open it and then press Shift as we click on the composite snapshot we made. Now we'll drag it up onto the tab of the new file we just created. Without releasing our mouse or pen, we'll drag it down onto the new document and then release. Click 3D and New 3D Postcard from Layer. Click on the 3D Object Toolbox and choose the Rotate tool. Press and hold Shift as you click on the image. Move your mouse or pen upwards to rotate the image back on its horizontal axis. 
call up the 3D object scale tool and click on the image as you move your mouse or pen up to increase the size. Call up the 3D object pan tool to slide the image up. If you need to adjust any aspect of the image in 3D space, just go back to the appropriate 3D object tool to make the adjustment. Have fun making yourself or someone you know a custom star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching. <laughs>